For the first time since she broke off the president's cabinet, uh, Vice President Robredo is breaking her silence. She is the latest official to join calls to investigate Amnesty International's recent report, which claims that police are behind summary killings. Kung totoong binabayaran yung police for every for every killing that is done, um, gusto ng sabihin talagang extrajudicial killings ay yung extrajudicial killings ay state sanction. Uh, very serious accusation yon. Um, but but until wala pang formal investigation na ginagawa, it remains to be an accusation. Vice President Robredo thinks the report should not be outrightly dismissed without looking deeper into its claims. She singled out Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre, who has claimed before that Amnesty's report might just be part of a conspiracy to overthrow President Duterte. Pag ikaw ay Department of Justice, ikaw yung mag, mag iimbestiga na nasa ikaw yung may prosecutorial power. Wala mo na sana judgments until hindi mo pa napapag-aralan. To help us get to the bottom of this report, we have Matthew Wells live from London. Matthew is a senior crisis advisor at Amnesty International and a co-author of that report. Matthew, welcome to The Big Story. Thank you for having me. Uh, you are involved personally, I, I, I co-author in the report. Maybe let's start with, give us an idea on the methodology. I mean, how did you vet the resource persons and the witnesses that you cited in this report? Our report was based on 110 interviews undertaken across the different regions of the Philippines. Uh, so we undertook interviews in Metro Manila as well as in Cebu province and in, and in Mindanao. Um, and our work focuses really on interviewing people that have direct experience of events. So we're looking for eyewitnesses, people who saw um, exactly what happened in a, in a particular in event. And through that, we were able to look in particular at 33 specific incidents in which 59 people were killed. Some of them involved uh, formal police operations, whether through raids on people's homes or by bust operations. Uh, others were, were killings undertaken by unknown armed persons, the, the unknown gunman phenomenon. Um, and so our, our, our report looked at these, these variety of cases and came to the conclusion that many of them um, are in fact extrajudicial executions, either with direct police involvement in the killing or with the police um, acting as vigilantes or paying uh, paid killers in order to carry out some of the unknown gunman killings. Okay, Senator Richard Gordon, who headed one of the Senate committee hearings on, on uh, EJK says, um, he said there is clearly EJ case taking place, but he said there is no proof that any of this is, uh, is state-sponsored. Your report goes a bit further and, and says that, uh, that police are not only getting paid, but you're also suggesting that they're getting public funds. Right, so what we found is that in some of the formal police operations, the, the, the by-bust operations or the, or the raids on people's home, that where the police claim that um, the, the alleged drug offenders fought back, um, opened fire on the police, which caused the police to, to return fire and, and kill the suspect, that in fact witnesses that we spoke with consistently identified that the, that the police were at times killing people in, in cold blood, people who were on their knees with their arms raised, um, begging to surrender, and, and police officers were still um, killing these, these alleged drug offenders. Um, we also, as you indicate, we interviewed a, a police officer directly involved in, a, in an anti-illegal drugs unit who talked about um, not only the fact that they um, kill at times the alleged drug offenders and, and plant evidence to make it look like the person uh, fought back, um, but that there are, in, in some instances, under the table payments um, to police officers for these fatal shootings, um, which he referred to as, as encounters. Um, in addition, we interviewed several paid killers um, who talked to us about the fact that their boss was actually an active duty police officer. That's who assigns them um, different people, different jobs um, for them to, to carry out killings of alleged drug offenders. And they likewise were paid um, for these killings. So our report from a number of different ways in terms of interviewing direct witnesses, interviewing family members, interviewing police and, and paid killers themselves um, comes to the conclusion that, that many of these killings are extrajudicial executions that directly involve uh, the police. Okay, well, two, two questions, therefore, and a lot of the controversy here in the Philippines, certainly coming from the politicians, emanate from these two uh, questions. One is, 
they're saying this is hearsay. There's no affidavit uh, from any of the witnesses that, that you have. And second, even if you could, what evidence is there that these incidents, you mentioned that you talked to a police uh, officer involved in a killing, you talked to some uh, uh, hired killers, but what evidence is there that these are not isolated agents and that these are in fact, these, these in fact form not just a trend, but prove a policy? Well, I, I think several things. First, um, you know, this was uh, this was shown over, uh, you know, not just in Metro Manila again, but we were documenting cases um, across the country, and we saw a very similar pattern. Um, police reports look very similar um, in in Metro Manila compared to places in Cebu Province and places in in Mindanao, um, whereas the witness accounts likewise are very similar in, in pointing out that many of these are people who were killed unarmed, attempting to, to surrender to the police um, when they're gunned down in, in cold blood. So there was um, a, a, a cross-section, really, of cases in which we found startlingly similar um, uh, findings in terms of the way people were being killed. That was then further corroborated by speaking with um, a police officer with, with, paid, kill, with paid killers. Um, so those interviews in, in many ways just corroborated what we were hearing from direct witnesses to killings across the country. And I think it's important here you know, also to, to note that our report um, in many ways echoes the findings of many others that have come before. Um, journalists in the Philippines and from international outlets have done remarkable work on this issue over the last seven months documenting a number of cases in which people um, seem to have been killed unlawfully. Other okay. human rights groups, including Philippine human rights organizations and international organizations, have likewise documented a number of cases. And so I think what's important right now is for the Senate to look at this totality of evidence that's coming from Amnesty and from many other organizations and outlets and see that it's time to undertake a really serious investigation into what's happening to determine how high responsibility goes and to ensure that there's ultimately okay. accountability um, we, for we don't, we the don't more have than 7,000 killings that have happened. Okay, thank you, Matthew. We don't have that much time, but just one quick question. Would Amnesty International and its people, and for that matter, some of the people that you interviewed, would you know if they would be and would you be open to participating in the Senate hearings? Amnesty is always interested in working closely with governments in order to address human rights issues. Uh, you know, if the Senate um, requests that, that we participate in a hearing, we will look at that very closely and, and, um, and, and would certainly be open to, to, to potentially participating. Uh, in terms of others, the you know, people that we spoke with, the, the victims and witnesses, um, that's ultimately their choice whether they participate in a, in a hearing. As you know, and as we found out in, in documenting cases across the country, there are certainly strong fears of, of reprisals. Um, and so whether someone is going to participate in a Senate hearing is, is ultimately up to them. Um, but as for us in Amnesty, we, we're always ready to um, you know, assist the government in terms of providing our public documentation as, as well as speaking with them more about our methodology and our specific findings. Okay, Matthew Wells of Amnesty International, thank you very much.